Hi everyone, today I'm coming at you from my floor in front of my beautiful, very wizardly looking apothecary. I wanted to do a more casual sit down kind of vlog video. I hope people like this format. First big life update, I am 30 days sober. I'm celebrating that. I have my recovery meeting today. I found one at the Equality Center in downtown Portland. I'm super grateful to have a queer exclusive space to discuss some of these things. I've tried a couple anonymous programs and I can definitely see the good that they provide in the world. And I know a lot of people swear by the 12 steps, but I think that it wasn't necessarily for me. As a queer person, it's a little bit hard to embrace religious rhetoric, even when they try to make it inclusive, but still use words like God at the beginning and end rituals. I just think that the rituals that we partake in and the language that we use is really important. And if that's not resonating or if that can be triggering, it's really hard to incorporate healing into those processes. So finding a non-affiliated, all recovery, queer program was exactly what I needed and it has kept me sober for 30 days. That's from drugs. My drug of choice is definitely marijuana. I know that there are a lot of harder drugs out there and everyone's recovery process is different, but with the rise in popularity and legalization of marijuana and the amount of everyday users that I know in my life, I want to see more spaces open up to the discussion of how that can affect a person. I have not had alcohol since 2019. There are a lot of reasons why I quit drinking. I kind of used cannabis products as a way to quit drinking. I think most of the people that I socialize with have sent me lots of memes and stuff where it's like, oh, no drinks for me. I just do drugs. And you know, that was good for me for a while. Um, it is up to the individual to determine whether or not their use is detrimental in their lives. And that stopped working this year for me. We do have kind of an ego response built into us to say, oh, but that's for other people. I don't have a problem with it or my problem is manageable or I've only had a problem with these things when we were in a pandemic or whatever it is. At the end of the day, I realized that I was covering up a lot of personal problems or leaning on vices for certain problems and certain triggers. And if I wanted to move forward in my life in a productive way, I needed to cut these things out. I try to practice radical non-judgment. Forgiveness is a huge part of getting to a recovery journey and then staying on that recovery path. I also went on testosterone. I've been transitioning, but I see myself as trans non-binary. Those hormones, in addition with the drugs that I was taking, in addition to having access to the internet and I don't know, just being inundated with sensory input all the time kind of put me in a dark place where I was really self-isolating, really tailoring my day around the drugs that I was taking and just keeping myself small. I also think about it and I would love to tally up every dollar I ever spent on drugs and alcohol. Just thinking about my like queer punk existence and being like, man, you know, the man's taking my money. <laughs> from like being so dependent on these substances and thinking about what I could have been doing to liberate myself with that extra liquid cash. I try not to go down that rabbit hole a lot because <laughs> you can go into a dark place. But I don't know, I think there's really something to that, right? We spend so much time at work. We spend so much time kind of squandering our health for work. And then I would get to the point of exhaustion and I would rely on substances to get me back to what I thought was like a healthy place. And I don't know, I just think that I could have been better allocating resources. This is also the like very light version of my sobriety journey. There are traumas involved with that too. I think everyone has their quote unquote rock bottom or their wake up call. I think for now, those are my experiences and I'm gonna save sharing those for safe spaces like the all recovery program that I found. I'm gonna to try to link some things in the description that helped me find the resources that resonated with me. If any of this enlightens anyone who's listening to it or sparks something in them, it takes a while to find what works for you, the individual, but there are many different pathways that are out there to get 
someone to that starting point. And I think I wanted to share this to kind of destigmatize what sobriety can look like or what one has to experience to get to a sobriety journey. Addiction exists on a spectrum and everyone's wake up call is different. And sometimes I don't even think you need that. I've had friends who start the year with something like a sober January. Usually it's under the guise of like a tolerance break, especially with things like cannabis. I find that rhetoric interesting. I've definitely fallen prey to it before taking a step back with that mentality, looking at it as a sober period or not wanting to engage in it. They shine a light on how systemically ingrained things like alcohol and drug use are. Looking at it within a culture is an important practice. Now that I have committed to staying sober and not just taking a tolerance break, I find instances where this kind of passive acknowledgement or assumption that people will partake in alcohol and drugs to be kind of bogging me down. So finding places where I don't feel pressured to do that or feel that it's an expectation is really important. I am lucky to have supportive environments and places where I can remain sober and still socialize. Carving out those spaces for oneself is honestly really difficult. I think that this is very much one of those things that requires individual healing, but also kind of it takes a village, right? We really only are as good as our support systems, especially when we seek healing. So I hope more and more people can find safe spaces like I've been able to find and are able to assess kind of where they fall on this spectrum of systemic substance use and really engage in it critically and mindfully and without shame. So those are my thoughts on all of this. I wanted to just take some time to talk kind of casually about it for my own brain, but also because I plan on making some meditations around this. I'll be interested to see how the algorithm responds. I know that I'm on a queer channel and historically queer content and queer tags have not been favored by an algorithm. And since so much of substance use has to do with hyperconsumption, it makes me think that algorithms may not be supportive of tags like sobriety and things like that. So that will be interesting research that will come from my next couple of videos. Ultimately, I hope that it encourages some people to self-assess or at the very least to become allies to the sober babes who are in their lives. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Please let me know that you are here. Either leave a comment or hit the like button. I know that sounds kind of pandery, but I really, I do want to know who has been here and if this resonated with you at all. So that would be really helpful and encouraging for me. And I hope that the engagement also makes you feel like you're a part of someone's recovery journey because you are. And I hope that it's helpful in anyone's recovery journey who might be watching this. I got a lot of love to spread out there. I'll see you soon.